about rivers and their shape. What's a river? What does it do? Well, the job of a river is to carry water from the continents down to the ocean. It's part of the hydrologic cycle. Gravity drives the flow. Rivers slope downhill. And water carries sediment and other particles. Any given river or stream drains a specific part of the landscape, and that's called a drainage basin. Let's have a look at that. So this is a drainage basin of the Mississippi River. Another word for that is watershed, and another word you might see is catchment. And the definition is simply this. All of the area upstream that drains into a particular given river or stream is part of the drainage basin or the catchment. That means all the tributaries and streams that merge into the larger river are part of that river's drainage basin. Now you may have seen signs in your community that say something like entering Bull Creek Watershed. This is your community reminding you that not only will all the rain that falls there end up in the river, so will all the pollutants that fall there. Drainage basins are separated by an area called a divide, and that's a line really on a map on one side a raindrop that falls there would fall into the drainage basin A and on the other side to the drainage basin B. You've probably heard of the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide in the U.S. is the line on one side of which a raindrop would end up in the Pacific Ocean and on the other side in the, either the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic. So here's a few more vocabulary words. These are on your keyword terms and so you should have an opportunity to look them up and pay attention to what they mean. A gradient is a slope, the slope of the land. Discharge is a volume of water in meters squared per second or centimeters squared per second. Velocity is the speed that the river is moving. As usual, that's in distance per time. Headwaters is where the river starts, and base is where the river ends up. And usually base is sea level, but not always. Sometimes base could be a lake, for example. Let's look at discharge and velocity because these are related terms. The velocity, of course, is in meters per second, discharge in cubic meters per second. So what's missing? Well, hopefully you recognize that square meters are missing, and this is an a area measurement. So that's the cross-section of the river. How wide is it? How deep is it? Rivers carry sediment. That's a really important role that rivers play. So when you're standing in a flowing river, you can feel the force that it exerts on you. Same thing happens to sediment, to vegetation, to fish, etc. Really fine sediment is suspended in the water and it moves pretty much all the time. Larger sediment rolls or hops along the bottom of the bed. We call that movement saltation. And really large sediment, like big stones and boulders, only moves if there's a large flood, and therefore pretty rarely. This is a graph of sediment transport showing you what happens to a particular size sediment at a particular velocity of river. And it's a little complicated, so we'll go through it a bit at a time. Notice that the flow speed of the river is on the vertical axis, grain size on the horizontal. And the grain size is divided by color into different categories of grains, clays and, and silts, sand, gravel, pebbles, and boulders. And there's two lines on this graph. And those lines define regions where, at the top, the grains are being eroded away. That is, the river can pick that grain up out of the sediment and rock and out of the ground and make it move. In the middle section, sediment can be transported. It can't be plucked out, but it can be transported if it's already in the river. And then at the bottom, that particle will drop out and be deposited from the river. Let's have a look at a particular flow speed and see what happens. This red line here is marking the flow speed of 30 centimeters per second. And at this river velocity, silts and sands are being eroded. They're being plucked out of the ground and picked up and moved. Sand and gravel is being transported. But things like pebbles, stones, and boulders are too heavy to be moved by a river at this speed, and so they are being deposited. You can also look at a particular grain size and notice that sand might be eroded or transported or deposited depending on the flow of the river. So a much faster river can actually erode sand, 
a river moving at moderate speed can transport sand if it's already in the river. And of course, if the river is very slow moving, the sand will drop out and be deposited. We're going to focus now on what a river looks like. What shape does it take? And this is a function of a lot of things. First of all, the discharge, how much water is being moved. The velocity, how fast is it being moved. The sediment load, rivers change shape as a function of how much sediment is actually being carried. The vegetation, the kind of rock that it's passing through. And the shape, the morphology of a river changes from its headwaters to its base. In the upper part of the river, the gradient tends to be higher, the channel might be straighter and narrower. Whereas closer to the base, the gradient is much lower, there tends to be a wide channel with big bends and a floodplain developed. Type number one are braided rivers. That's the first one we're going to look at. Braided rivers, shown here, it tends to be very wide with multiple channels. This occurs where there's a lot of sediment being transported and that sediment is relatively coarse, sand, gravel, and larger. Uh, and it is an area of very high erosion. It's common in landscapes near mountains, especially with glaciers where you have a heavy runoff, a lot of water, um, and a lot of sediment being moved by that water. Another kind of river shape that you get up near the headlands in the mountains where gradient is really steep and you're close to the source is this kind of cascading river that you see here. It happens when the ground is hard and there are large boulders around. As you get down towards the base, the river tends to meander. Meander is an interesting word. It actually is the name of a river in Greece, in ancient Greece, it's now currently in Turkey. But meander has entered the lexicon as an English language word that simply means to wander aimlessly on a winding path. So a meandering river does exactly that. It wanders on a winding path. Um, it occurs where the sediment being transported is very fine, sand and clay. The gradient is low, and the floodplain is pretty well developed. Meandering shaped rivers are more common near the base, and so we see a lot of them along the Gulf Coast in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Let's take a closer look at what happens at the bends on these rivers. This is an aerial photograph of a meandering river. And you can see on the outside of a bend, a cliff has formed. And on the inside of the bend, this nice wide sandbar called a point bar. So why does it do that? Well, here's the processes that are going on in a me meandering river. The outside of the bend has the fastest flowing water, lots of energy, and therefore it will erode the rock on the outside of a bend. Whereas the inside of the bend is much lower energy, much lower friction, the water is moving at a slower pace, and therefore sediment is being deposited on the inside of a bend. This is all happening because the speed of the water varies from the outside to the inside of a river bend. And you know this, you've probably played a game like Crack the Whip as a kid, where all the kids hold hands and someone in the middle starts to turn. The person on the farthest away, on the outside of that turning person, they have to move the fastest to keep up. And it's the same with water. So these arrows are showing you the speed of the river, the velocity of the river, various pieces of the channel as it moves. And notice that the highest velocity, the fastest current, is always on the outside of the bend. So we form cut banks on the outside and point bars on the inside. And as you might imagine, that's going to cause the river to move. The river will move towards the outside of bends always. And that makes a little bend become a bigger bend, become a bigger bend with time. One common occurrence in this kind of river system is that the bends become so bendy that they finally get to the point where the river will cut a new straighter channel rather than uh, continue along this very wide bend. In a soft sediment, it can just cut a new short channel, and this river has done that. What it leaves behind, this abandoned river channel, is called an oxbow lake. So here's a sketch of a meandering river and the geography of the landscape around it. 
you can see that the meandering river has moved and you can see the meander scrolls showing you its previous position. The meandering river will, will wander all over this floodplain, this very wide area that it continues to erode flat is called the floodplain and the meandering river moves along it. You can see channel deposits where it used to be. There are oxbow lakes here where meanders have been cut off and here's a place where a meander is about to be cut off. Those two bends will get closer and closer together until the new channel gets cut and that becomes another oxbow lake. This is a picture of the Rio Negra in South Africa and this is a really interesting sh shot because you can see a lot of meander scars in this particular river in this area and the current channel looks gray in this Landsat's image.